So as I promised, I uh, recorded this uh, session again for you, the lecture. It's a biology session and it's two chapters of the uh, characteristics of the living organisms and the um, properties of the cell or cell as structure. Characteristics of the living organisms, okay? So it means that if you want to know something is alive or is dead, how do you know? How do you know that this table is not alive or is alive? But I am alive, I'm not dead. Based on what criteria you have made this decision? How did you find out that the soil is not alive or is alive? How did you find out that a bee, uh, uh, for example, is alive uh, or is dead? How do you categorize the things based on being dead either or within that, that or um, alive? They have some sort of criteria that at first you have to compare them, the, these uh, characteristics with these criteria and see if they are, um, actually they have these criteria. And so these, based on this definition, they are following that. So if they have it in them, it means that they are alive. If they don't have, it means that uh, they are dead or they are not alive. Okay. so. You know that we uh, actually divide the ecosystem into two, two categories, into two parts. We have um, ecosystem which is alive and we have some part of the ecosystem which is not alive. Okay, so a life part is all the organisms, all the things that are alive, cells and plants, animals and insects and everything. And the non-alive part is uh, that part like the soil, uh, air, water, nutrients and all these things. So I write the criteria for you. If something is doing this, it's alive. It's not doing this, it's dead. So, in order to make it easy for you, I make a secret code so you can memorize and after that use it. So no need to know all those criteria one by one. You can just put it into a secret code. The secret code is Mrs. Gran. Why Mrs. Gran? They come from the initial of some of the uh, words. M stands for movement. Movement. It means that anything that moves and changes its location or place is alive. Did you get it? So anything that moves has had the ability to change the position or place is, is called as alive. The other one is R, which is Reproduction. Reproduction means anything, anything that gives, makes off springs of itself and the more of the same kind of the organism, the more cells, more babies or whatever, it's called as being alive. If you are able, or that cell, or that organism is able to reproduce, to make the similar kind of itself, so it is alive. If not, it's not, it's dead. S it stands for sensitivity. What does that mean? Sensitivity means the ability to detect changes in the environment. Any changes to make you aware of the dangers or from, uh, to make you aware of your location, where you are standing, where you are heading to, and also make responses based on that to stay away from the predators or to be safe and secured. So that sens sensitivity, if anything, any organism has, it means that it's alive. G stands for growth. What does that mean? Everything that increases in the size and number. The cells increase in the size and number, so they are alive. To, so, or size, or number, or increase in the mass of the object. It means it is still alive. Don't forget the difference between the mass and the weight. They look like the sum of the same, but the units are different and the definitions are different, 
mass is always the same. Everywhere you are is an amount of the particles you carry, okay? But weight, it depends where you are standing on, where you are living on. Are you on the top of the mountain or under the ground? Or under the sea? Or you are in the other planets? Or you are on the earth? It depends because it's under the effects of the gravity. Okay? So your weight changes based on where you are living on. So your mass, your size, if changes and the number of the cells, it means that you are growing. If you grow, it means that you are alive or that organism is alive or another R stands for reproduction sorry respiration respiration or respire we respire the ex the cells respire it means we use food and break it apart using some kind of the reaction chemical reaction to produce boom energy energy is used for walking talking and many other things activity that you do for some cells yeah of running so respiration so is the burning of the food inside the cells or then you produce energy and you use it so the other one is excretion e is the ex uh, actually stands for excretion Excretion means to give out the the, the excess uh, the excess waste materials that you do not use, or you are, are toxic or poisonous for your body, and they are usually the um, the product of the metabolism in your body. Okay, so if they stay in your body or in the cells, they become toxic for them. They cause um, problem, mutation, or cause a lot of diseases. So you should you should get rid of them through excretion. If any organism is doing excretion, it means that it is alive. And nutrition. Be careful. Nutrition and nutrient are different. Nutrition means to feed, to eat, but is eating uh, is a kind of knowledge. Uh, but um, nutrient is a kind of uh, substance that is necessary, vital for your body. Nutrients are different. Can be can be vitamins, can be minerals, can be water, can be anything, or can be gases that your body needs. So there are nutrients, and this is nutrition is a kind of knowledge, or is a kind of uh, it means that eating, feeding. So to, if you if anything is uh, taking in the food in. So it means that uh, has a nutrition, so it is alive. And so everything is made of the cells. I mean, all um, living organisms are made up of the small, tiny cells. Some of the cells, I mean, only one cell itself is an, called an organism. I mean, it's itself a, a kind of organis organism. But we call it as unicellular, unicellular organism. Only one cell that organism has. For example, like amoeba, like bacteria, like virus, they are only made of one cell, so they are unicellular. But um, there are multicellular, like human beings, like animals, like insects. <coughs> Sorry. So there are made of a multiple or a lot of cells that are actually arranged um, next to each other. There are different shapes, but all of them are cell, animal cells or plant cells, but there are a lot of them and they are sorted in the, uh, properly in a place and there are all of them aimed to do one job, which is to let that animal or the plant to survive and to live. They all work together to provide all those things that animal or the plants, the multicellular animals and the plants they need. They need. Okay, um, so and um, so we, we continue with that. That we have two cells. The type of the cells. Cells are all the same. They are called as cells, but the type of the cells then. The structure is somehow different. So we categorize the cells into two categories. One of them is the animal cell. The other one is the plant cell. I write the plant here. 
and put the animal here. Okay? Actually, different parts of the plants and the animal cells, they have uh, different shapes of the cells. But uh, we just pick one, for example, from the leaf of the cell. Uh, from the leaf of the plant, I take one cell from, for example, uh, for, it can be palisade cell. The palisade cells they are responsible to make chlorophyll, to make, produce energy for the, and the food for the whole uh, plant. So we call them as a palisade cell. Palisade. Okay? They are usually uh, placed inside the leaf of the plant. Okay? They are full of chlorophyll and everything, green pigments. And we have animal cell, I just pick it from the liver, for example, of the animal. There is usually the animal cells also, and there are different, it depends in which part of the body there are, but the whole structure is the same, only the feature is different, okay? And how it looks like. But the, the components that it has usually is the same. So all the animal cells the same, all the plants the same, animal plant cells the same, just the features are different. The things that you see from outside, if you put under the microscope, will be different. So some animal and the plant. In the plant cell, we have, in both of them, we have this uh, structure that surrounds all the things inside the cell, okay? It surrounds all the things, the liquids, the, the organelles, everything that goes inside this. So it surrounds, it doesn't let it go out easily or to uh, spread around, okay? So it surrounds it and, and uh, uh, enclosed it and, and envelops, envelops or encapsulates it. And here also we have, why I draw the plants are like this? Because usually it has this kind of uniform structure and um, because of the another structure that he has around this uh, structure. But this one doesn't have that second structure. This one is called, it is very narrow, it is very, um, uh, it's a very tender tissue. It's like a, if you the tissue that you see uh, after the uh, eggshell, if you break the eggshell, you see something is attached to it. If you pull that one out, it's transparent. This one is exactly the same as that one, okay? So this is a cell membrane. This is called a cell membrane. Cell membrane. Another name it has, P. P M or partially permeable membrane. It means that it is so selective and it doesn't let everything to go in and out easily. It chooses which one should go and which should stay in. Which one can enter, which one can let it to go out. So this one also has the similar structure. PPM or cell membrane. It is very narrow, very narrow, so tender as a membrane. And exactly as I said, if you break the eggshell, under the eggshell, it's something, a membrane, uh, which is transparent, it's attached to it. You just pull it, it is transparent. You can easily see through. It's exactly its property is the same as that one. Okay? So why the shape, what is actually fixing the shape of the plant cell that the animal cell doesn't have is this a structure. This is called as cell wall. Cell wall. The cell wall or fully, fully permeable membrane is a kind of a membrane Okay, tissue that it lets everything to pass through it. Well, it is made of the cellulose. So, uh, it, 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 it keeps, it holds the whole thing shaped in its place. It doesn't let the shape of the plant cell to change easily. So um, that's why compared to this one, which is, has an irregular shape, the shape of this one is because of the cell wall around it, which is made of a uh, cellulose, okay. The next one, uh, the next one that is common in both of them is cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is a kind of liquid. This liquid 
holds everything in. Everything is floating inside it. Everything is dissolved inside it. The gases, the nutrients, the minerals, the water, the um, everything, the organelles, uh, the nucleus, everything is uh, actually swimming inside this, okay, inside the cytoplasm. Everything happens here inside this liquid. Most of them they have uh, animal cell and the plant cell. Another thing which is common in them is the brain. It actually looks like a brain of us because something we need a center to think and decide what uh, the whole system should do. This is a nucleus of the plant cell and the animal cell. But most of them we have, which is called nucleus. It is a control center of the cell. It decides what is, uh, it monitors everything and decides what actually should happen next. And the next thing is something that the plant cell has and animal cell doesn't have, which is called vacuole or cell sap. Cell sap. This one, animal cell doesn't have. In the vacuole, you can find a lot of things happening there. Actually, a lot of water also can be inside uh, inside it. And um, actually, this uh, this cell sap is full of the water to keep the shape and the firmness of the cell. Okay, uh, so this water can shows how much actually how uh, firm the uh, the cell membrane is attached to the cell wall. Okay. If it is too much water in it, it is um, turgid, it is swollen, and, and the cell membrane attaches firmly to the cell wall. If not, if the vacuole doesn't have that much water, of course, it is, this attachment is very loose. Okay? But later, we can talk about that one, but not now. And the next one is chloroplast that the plant cell has and animal cell doesn't have. Chloroplast. Chloroplast is uh, like a sack, is like a bag, but which is full of uh, things, small rounded green things inside. Those green things are called chlorophyll. Inside it is a lot of chlorophyll. So these are chlorophylls chlorophylls. So chloroplast is bigger than the chlorophyll. There are a lot of chlorophylls inside the chloroplast sac. Okay, you see this is the chloroplast sac and each of them are green pigments or chlorophylls. Green pigment. Okay, um, it is responsible for doing the photosynthesis and providing the energy and food and also is the, is the place that um, the storage can be actually uh, stored, okay? So it's the place that a starch is stored and the photosynthesis is taken place. So uh, one more thing I add, why the photosynthesis and uh, respiration are very important for us? Because the plants are very important because if you see, the plants do the photosynthesis into their leaves and they capture the carbon dioxide from the air, water from the soil, light from the, of course, sun, the light energy, they combine them together and they make food in the form of the glucose, C6, H2L, O6, and then also produce oxygen. Now, this oxygen and the food, where do they go? The oxygen is actually captured by our nose. It goes into the nostrils and we breathe in. It goes into the lungs and then goes all, all the way, in, finally, into your bloodstream. Okay, into your bloodstream, and from your bloodstream, it goes into the one, to the cells that they need. Is one cell, okay? The other one is the plant itself. Now, directly or indirectly, you eat it. You eat the food which is produced by the by the plants, uh, which is stored in the form of the starch in their leaves. 
No, the animals can eat it, and you indirectly eat the animals, that the energy goes into your body in the second or third hand energy, less and less and less. But if you take directly from the plants, of course, the whole thing, the food directly goes into your body, then go to, through the digestion, and then goes assimilation, through the assimilation, it goes inside your cells. It is, goes inside the bloodstream, the nutrients, and then from there it goes into the one cell. Now, everything happens inside the cell. The cell now has oxygen from your blood and has nutrients and the food from your bloodstream. And now, oxygen and food are combined together. Here, food and oxygen combined together. We call this as respiration. Huh? Respiration. That's what is happening inside the animal cell animal cell they respire they combine food and the oxygen which is gained through the bloodstream and they uh, make uh, carbon dioxide which is a waste product of the metabolism and is very poisonous should be sent out that's one one of the poisonous things that should be sent out through excretion and h2o we need it we keep it as much as we need and the excess will be sent out again okay, excreted water and the last thing is energy. A lot of energy will be produced by this process. So we depend on the plants. If they were not here with us, we, no life will be actually on the earth. So we have to thank the plants. See you again.